All right, so we've been getting a decent amount of hate on some of our recent videos. Lately, we've talked a lot about new helmets and all the technologies that go into it and how it's supposed to be safer to wear something like a Riddell Axiom versus something like the older Riddell IQ. But some people just don't believe it. They're saying it's not actually about protecting the skull, which the helmet does, it's about protecting the brain. And none of these helmets protect the brain, which is fair. In fact, uh, you know, a lot of NFL guys are actually starting to feel the same way too. So much so that this product right here is actually getting a lot of traction this NFL season. This is the Q Collar by Q30. All right, so I'll start by saying we are not affiliated with Q30 in any way. They did send this to us for free, but they're not paying us to make this video. If this is proven to be an effective way to reduce risk of head injuries and trauma over time, it will be something we talk a lot more about on the channel in the future. Our goal is to provide our audience with all the options for swag and safety. Also, I'll use the blanket term of studies for a lot of different things I talk about in this video. I'll make sure to link all the studies and stuff that they have down below. That way you can do all your research for yourself too. So how does this thing work? So helmets are designed to actually help protect your skull from fracturing when you make contact, but it doesn't really do a lot for the brain inside. Now companies are trying to get around this by trying to like absorb the impact and limit that movement, but it's really tough to do. This is called brain slosh, and this is what happens to your brain when you actually make a hit. Now everyone knows about the big hits and concussions and the ones that are clearly visible for everyone to see, but Q30 is not trying to solve that. They're trying to reduce the subconcussive repetitive head impacts. Those are all the little hits that you take every play that add up over years that are affecting guys like soccer with head balls or even stuff like boxers with kind of of all the little repetitive jabs. There's stuff that you don't actually know what's happened, but it is accumulating over time. Now the technology this thing uses here is called jugular vein compression. Now the blood goes into your head, but then with this on it, with a little bit of compression on your jugular veins, it slows the blood from leaving your head and going back to your heart. Having more blood in your head fills up the gap between your skull and your brain and helps give more of a cushion when you're making these impacts. And it sounds really cool, but does it actually work? Well, they ran studies with Dr. Julian Bales. He's actually this guy in the concussion movie. Anyways, he saw an 80% reduction in head injuries when he tested it in mice and pigs. So they went and prototyped a bunch of different ideas and styles and designs, and then they went out and started testing them. After they found a lot of success with their jugular vein compression idea. They went out and made a bunch of different iterations, designs, styles of this thing, and then that's how we ended up with this design here today. From there, they launched all their performance studies. They didn't find any decrease in anyone's heart rate, blood oxygen level, or reaction time. Then they went and did their clinical trials where they gave these to 450 high school students in the Cincinnati area. What they did is they took all these high school students, they gave them MRIs before their season started to get their baseline. Then they gave out the Q collar to half of those students. All 450 students were also given accelerometers to where the measure of impact they were taking every play throughout their high school season. At the end of the season, they re-MRI'd all 450 students. 77% of the students that wore the Q collar saw no change in their brain activity. Whereas 73% of the students that didn't wear the Q collar saw a significant change in their white brain matter. Next step, get the NFL involved. This video is sponsored by no one. Well, I guess kind of us. And if you guys didn't know, me and Devin are trying our best to give you guys access to all the same products as NFL players. And some of the most highly requested ones have been the Nike dry fits, some of the arm sleeves, and some of the towels and ski masks and that kind of stuff. Because these products aren't always available to the consumer and sometimes just the NFL player, we've taken it on ourselves to go get them for ourselves and set them up where you can buy them too. This by far is gonna be the most popular product. This is the standard Nike dry fit that all NFL players wear. Now, most guys go for a baggy look, so if you do wanna pick one of these up for yourself, I would size up. A couple things that we did to try and make it a little more custom for you is if you want the standard Nike dry fit, you can just pick it up nice and plain like the NFL players would, but you can also add customization. If you want on the sleeves, you can add your number and it'll go underneath the Nike logo, or if you wanna put something down the sleeve, you can do that too. You can add an Instagram handle, a nickname, anything you want. That kind of customization is available across all of our products. So the three that we're starting out with are gonna be these Nike Dry Fit. We also do have sleeves. Again, you can add your own customization and numbers to. We have these ski masks like Jalen Ramsey wears. And then next we'll be coming out with the skinny towels to match. If you do wanna pick any of these up, they are linked in the description down below. And we have no coupon codes or any discounts or anything. And frankly, because we're almost making no money on these. These are really expensive to get from Nike. Hence why they're not really available to the consumer. So we're trying to just get them to you as easily as possible and then basically just cover our costs. So if you wanna check out our new store and get all the same products as the NFL players, check out the first link in the description down below. All right, back to the video. Now, I hope you're not too young to remember, but Luke Keekley was a middle linebacker for the Carolina Panthers. And in 2015 and 2016, he missed nine games due to concussions. And this was like at the peak of his career when they were on their Super Bowl run. Luke voluntarily enrolled himself in the Q collar study and was the first NFL player to wear it. Over the next three seasons, he only missed one game. Since then, they've done 25 more studies and have also been approved by the FDA as a class two medical device that protects your brain from subconcussive repetitive head impacts. So who in the NFL wears it? Tony Pollard, Dalton Schultz, 
Taylor Rapp, Shaq Thompson, Buda Baker, JD McKinzik, Drew Tranquil, Boston Scott, and Adrian Amos. Now let's talk about how I feel about it. So when you put this thing on, you do want it to sit a little bit lower on your neck and you want to run a two inch gap in the middle. They actually give you this little tool. So you can see if you're in the red, it's too tight. You want it in the green. Also you need to make sure that the goal of this is to put pressure on these sides of the neck. If you're putting pressure on the front, if it's sitting too high or if it's too close in the middle, you'll be cutting off your trachea. Something you don't want to do. Again, it's all about just a little bit of slight pressure on the sides of your neck. Now for the first time you put it on, it does feel pretty restrictive. I can't lie. But to get used to it over two to three days, you're supposed to wear it in small increments where you have a heart rate elevated for like five to 10 minutes. So basically do it for a part of your workout, take it off, put it on again, and do that over and over for a couple days. Now the first time I wore this, I did feel some pressure on my neck, like it was a little bit restricting, but I actually wore it a little bit throughout the day when I was working and then I wore it to work out later. And now I'm actually really starting to get used to it. Even talking at the beginning felt a little bit weird, but now it actually feels pretty normal. Now as far as overall comfort go, you kind of have two options. You can wear it with just the rubber pads here, or you can buy one of their little sleeves and put it over top. I do like how the fabric feels on my neck and I actually like the fabric a lot more for working out because it kind of wicks away the sweat a little bit. Also, these sleeves are a nice way to just add your own team colors and just get the standard gray and then get a different sleeve to add a different color over top. Also to fit it to yourself, remember you do need to make sure that you have a measuring tape. On their site, it'll show you exactly how to measure it. And then you get a specific size on here. I think it changes by the inch. So. It's comfortable, it's proven to work, but is it affordable? Now, if you go on their website, it's either 220 Canadian or I think that's around 120 US. And then to pick up the sleeve is another 20 Canadian. Now, when you see that price at the beginning, it can be a little bit shocking considering you just basically look at this like a piece of plastic and some rubber on the inside, putting a little bit of pressure on your neck. But with that price, you do have to consider the amount of time that went into doing all the studies and all the medical trials and all that kind of money that would need to go into getting it to this point. Also, if you're trying to find a way to justify this, I would look at this more of like considering it compared to the cost of a helmet. See, a lot of high school teams will get the maximum use out of a helmet they can, which is around 10 years, which means if they buy a helmet in 2010, it will not be replaced until 2020. And that means they're missing 10 years of new technology and all the helmets aren't being turned over year over year. So you're not getting some of that better technologies. Now for peace of mind, some parents go out and buy their kids their own helmets. I've seen that a ton in the past, but helmets nowadays are between 400 to a thousand dollars. Whereas if they are trying to protect their brain instead, a parent might actually want to go out instead of buying the kid a new helmet, just buy him this. Now I'm not saying a Q collar plus a Revo speed is like as safe as like just a Riddell Axiom on itself. I don't think there's any studies that have done anything like that. So I can't really say that one way or the other. All I'm saying is if the parent is looking for a little bit of peace of mind, spending $200 on this might be a little bit more budget friendly than spending $400 to $1,000 on some of those newer helmets. Okay, so there you go. Now, if you'd like to learn about any of the studies or anything we talked about, everything will be linked in the description down below. Look at their website, look at their studies. On Sundays, watch which NFL guys are wearing this. You'll easily be able to see it look like a halo around these guys' necks. Wait until the end of the football season and then right before your next season, make the decision for yourself if you think this is gonna be the right move for you. Honestly, in my opinion, I think this thing's gonna blow up over the next next coming years, especially as all the NFL guys kind of keep talking to each other and keep recommending it. But that's all I got for today. Check you guys next time.